Good afternoon, I'm Ed Pozzuoli, CEO of Trip Scott, and today we're fortunate enough uh, to have a well-known uh, squawk box uh, regular, uh, Mark Grant. Mark, welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Mark, for purposes of our uh, viewers, please give them a little snapshot of your background. Absolutely. I've been uh, president of one investment bank, I run capital markets at four investment banks, been on the board of four investment banks, I'm on the board of a number of other com companies. One thing I would, I'm very proud of is I'm on, uh, on the board of uh, <coughs> Wounded Warriors Family Services and Chairman of the Investment Committee. Well, thank you for that. Let's get right to it. Sure. Uh, there's a pandemic. Yes. Um, this coronavirus. Uh, talk a little bit about how it's going to continue or is it going to continue to impact the markets like we've seen? Yes, I think it's going to impact the markets and probably more if this spreads. One of the issues here is that the, uh, we have no drugs to combat this uh, virus at all. We also don't know if it's going to attach itself to meat, which is source came from, from the meat market in Huan, or grains, and it could disrupt the supply chain for commodities. And uh, it could have an impact between one and a half to three percent on the China's uh, GDP, and could also have an impact on America's GDP if this thing spins out of control, which, please God, don't let it. How do you think we should be addressing that, both from an economic investment standpoint or otherwise? I mean, what's your advice? Yeah, I deal with some of the biggest money managers in the world. What I've told them is airlines, gambling casinos in China, uh, riverboat cruises, uh, ocean cruises, and uh, anything that uh, is going to expose people to this virus. And I also think they're there are going to be a lot of Americans that uh, don't want to get in a plane or don't want to go somewhere because they don't want the possibility of being exposed. The other story uh, of the day is impeachment. Uh, do you see any impact uh, on the markets with that over the long, over the long run? I think the markets just go along. It's a uh, sideshow, and between the two of us, I'll be delighted when it's finished. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you and me both. But but put aside the political ramifications. But I'm I'm more talking about the impact of the market. So as we head into uh, the 2020 election. Um, how do you see the markets reacting to the possibility of uh, the number of uh, political candidates that we have on the Democratic side? Uh, do you see any impact on the markets on any, with any of those potential nominees? Well, look, I'm old enough to have, from either party, socialists running for president is startling to me. You know, when I grew up, the guy stood on his own two feet and made something of himself. We were proud of him, and that doesn't seem to be the ethos in the world these days, especially in the United States. So if Trump is reelected and keeps the Senate, maybe even gets control of the House, I don't see much impact except positive and mild. If, you know, some of these people that are way out in the extreme got elected, yeah, then we're going to have a major impact on the market. And how, how does that impact look like, from a corporate standpoint? What are we looking at other than the result of the election? What are some of the leading indicators that people should be an eye, have an eye on? Well, in the economy right now, I think it's going along very well. There was a bunch of stuff in the press that the, uh, we were going to have a recession because we had an inbuilt, inverted yield curve. I said, that's a bunch of baloney. I said, the only reason we have an inbuilt, inverted yield curve is the Fed hadn't been buying Treasury bills. Right. So I talked to one of the people on the Fed, and I said, and I don't know whether they would listen to me or just did it on their own, but now they're in buying $60 billion a month in Treasury bills. I think we're in a low interest rate environment. I call it a borrower's paradise. But for fixed income investors, for it's retirees, tougher. for pension funds, it is very tough. You can't get any yield. And do you see that changing anytime soon? No. What happened last year, we had one of the most spectacular years in 40 years. Dow Jones, the NASD, the S&P 500, all up 25% more. Do I expect that again this year? Not a chance. Right. We've never seen two years back to back like that. I was uh, interviewed by the Financial Times recently. I said, maybe we'll be up about 5% in the equity markets. The biggest issue though, which isn't talked about in the press, is trying to find uh, yield. I have a strategy to do that, and, but it's very tough. And Describe a little bit of the strategy since you've led me there. <laughs> <laughs> so the strategy just really basically is half the money goes into corporate bonds, half the money goes into closed-end funds, 
All the closed end funds pay 10% or more, more. And you put the two together and you end up with around seven, seven and a half percent currently when the, you know, 10 year treasury is at 170. And you also get money every month. They all pay monthly. Right. So it's a so huge some income, advantage. Right. You get money, you get compounding of interest, and every 30 days you look around and see where to put the money. And you see, you see that strategy going forward for what, over the next couple of years? Yeah, anyway. Most people don't know very much about closed-end funds, and they're complicated, and you have to know what you're doing. So I wouldn't advise most people to rush out. You need some help. Most people need some help in that area. But it's, it's worthy of uh, at least worthy looking at Worthy of looking at, it. at yes. And so overall, talk a little bit about where you see the economy for both the United States and Florida. Okay, so the economy is in relatively good shape. Unemployment is certainly low. Unemployment for blacks, Hispanics, all across the board is low. I think it's great. I think Florida is going to continue to grow and maybe grow tremendously as people escape from New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, California, all these high tax states. I've been contacted by any number of hedge funds, money managers. Well, what's it like? Can we come down? Right. I've lived in Fort Lauderdale 28 years. It used to be this nice little town north of Miami. No longer. No longer. It's a uh, city, and it's going to get even bigger. I think that has some exciting aspects, aspects to it and some maybe not so exciting aspects to it. Trying to drive down Las Olas is a nightmare. It is. <laughs> but it, we're the victim of our own success, That's right? That's right. That's right. So talk a little bit about um, the, tax, the tax changes, the tax reform changes we saw last year or two. Uh, impacted uh, some of these transplanted Northeasterners and, and you know, basically fleeing to low uh, tax states. You know, some of the tax changes were difficult for some people, especially employees. You couldn't write off business dinners. You couldn't write off a lot of business expenses. But the cap on the cap on the write-off on the local taxes. The cap on the mortgages. Right. Uh, at ten grand is difficult. All in all, though, if you put it all together. My opinion, both a corporation and an individual are way better off living in Florida than some other place in the United States, plus we have this gorgeous weather. So. Well, and I think the studies bear that out. I, I just, in fact, I wrote a piece that talks about the U-Haul survey that says we're the number one uh, destination point for U-Haul vehicles. It's very interesting. There People you are. moving in, right? And there you <laughs> there are. You are. Confirmation. Moving in. Um, Talk a little bit about um, where you see some other states. So what happens in New York or California or Illinois, as an example, what, what, what does the future hold for them? My expectations at some point, because the average for state pension funds, as an example, is 7.5%, which is just ridiculous, stupid. Last year, they could obtain it because of their commitment to equities for part of their money. But my expectation this year, next year, is the state of Illinois pension funds the New York pension funds, some of the California pension funds, are going to be in real trouble because they can't they can't get the return the liabilities, right. and they can't get the return. And then, of course, uh, it's very unclear what a state would do at that point besides raise, ta raise taxes, and they would appeal to the federal government. But there's really no precedent to use your legal terms. Right. <laughs> Lastly, what's the uh, last word in the next uh, 12 months? Uh, what can our business leaders expect? from the economy? I think we're going to have a relatively good economy with the exception of, for our business leaders, this yield issue. I could see a huge amount of seniors, pension funds, retirees having major difficulties. And we might have to adjust the tax base in Florida or in Fort Lauderdale to account for lower incomes given that we don't want to displace people and throw right. them in the streets. So. Right. Okay. Well, on that note, I want to thank you, Mark, for spending the time My with us. My pleasure. And I appreciate it. Happy thank to you. Be thank here. you for sharing. Thank you for having me here.